<laughs> you didn't really think I was going to sing that song, did you? <laughs> I promise I would never do that to you guys. What's up everyone? Chris here again. Uh, so the Chinese have brought us a couple of pretty cool things over the years. Uh, they are single-handedly responsible for bringing us Bruce Lee. Every toy you've ever played with as a kid was also made uh, in China. And if you didn't know, the single greatest thing to ever happen to Android, HTC, the guys that made the first Google phone, uh, those guys are actually a, a Chinese company and they're out there. Crazy, huh? So thanks to my many good friends on Twitter, uh, I'm speaking specifically to Eric McBride, aka Died323, uh, on Twitter. He managed to find the next big thing from China. It's actually an Android ROM called MIUI. I'm not really sure exactly how to pronounce it. It could be Mui. Or you could just say MIUI. But what's so cool about it is it takes two really great ideas uh, some of the coolest stuff from iPhone OS and uh, just the cool stuff from Android and it just like combines them and they mate and they make Mui. I already know there are going to be some die hard Android fans that are going to pretty much consider this ROM an abomination. Uh, anything that even strays away from Android or gets a little too too close to uh, iPhone or the iOS, uh, people just freak out about and just say, I want nothing to do with it. But I'm either a fanboy or a hater, so I think it's actually kind of cool. There's absolutely no denying the personality of this ROM, and uh, if you want to try it out for yourself, it just might be the freshest thing you've ever put on your phone uh, since, since, since. So sit back and let me show you that lock screen. All right, so let's just get into this. Uh, first thing you're going to notice, of course, is this totally cool lock screen. Uh, pressing the dialer button will take you to the dialer. Um, if you slide it up and unlock it, uh, this will take you to a search. And, of course, the middle will take you to the thing. Uh, these lock screens are customizable, which is like this top half here. I like this one because it looks like you're opening a little present. A little Mui. The Mui present. It's really, really cool. Um, you can either drag it up or down to unlock so if you have a Nexus or something, it's probably pretty easy to do that, but to um, drag up to unlock. If you have an Evo, it's like really big screen, so um, you could also go down to unlock as well. So this is the launcher, and this is the, I guess probably the main, uh, the whole thing about this ROM in particular is that it the, the launcher is completely different than what you're used to and the icons and stuff. Uh, first thing I want to show you is uh, it has kind of like a transparent notification bar up at the top. Normally it's just a, a flat, opaque white. Uh, when you pull it down, you do have a bunch of these toggles, which is kind of like the power control ones, but they give you a ton of more options. The graphics and stuff, everything just looks really clean and clear, and there's no pixels or anything. It just looks like it's so uh, just put together very, very well and beautiful. The icons, like I kind of mentioned before, but um, kind of iPhone-ish. If it's a normal icon, say like navigation, it puts its own little box behind it. I think it chooses a random color. But again, I still think it's cool. The boxes aren't actually even just totally plain. Um, it might be kind of hard to see, but they have like this cool little, uh, there you go, cool little pattern behind them, like these little circles and stuff. So I don't know, just gives it some personality and stuff for some of those icons that you download from the market, of course, that aren't going to be like this. Uh, the ones that do come with the ROM, of course, music, Gmail, all the native apps and stuff, they're going to be themed appropriately. Uh, this little mail one looks like it's just like, I don't know, it looks cool. I like the, the whole bubble effect, and I think it's cool because it's uniform, and it kind of creates more, uh, makes Android look a little more put together and stuff. Uh, one of the reasons why I like the iPhone is because of their icons, and they're all kind of uniform and the same. Um, so yeah, this is cool. I think this is actually really rad. Uh, everything kind of behaves like as normal Android. You drag and you move them around. Um, one thing I do like is that it, it moves around the icons if you're trying to put them in between or something. So say you wanted something to be up here, you can put it up there and it just moves and pushes the other ones out of the way. Yeah, if Gingerbread doesn't have this, then I'm going to be really, really disappointed. Uh, this does have an FM radio. It's not going to work, of course, on my Evo. Pretty much nothing works on my Evo right now since this ROM isn't really made for it, but uh, we'll get into the apps a little bit later. The dock bar down here, you do have a dock bar, so you can just drag something, and it'll push them out of the way, and you can move it to wherever you like. And then you have the market. 
Now, one of the strange things about the home screen that I feel like it's going to be a make or break for a lot of people, and it goes against kind of the, the whole Android way of thinking, but there is no app drawer. And uh, it took me a few days to finally figure out what was going on. But basically, every time you install an app, it gets put on your home screen here. Uh, I think that's kind of cool because it really simplifies and makes things easier for, like, say, your e everyday user, your average user, or soccer mom or something. Um, everything that gets installed is immediately on their home screen and they can organize it and do whatever they want with it. I think it's kind of cool because I actually, I have so many apps that sometimes I actually even forget that I have them and I don't even put them on the home screen. And, uh, yeah, I just have so many that I forget I have them, but I think if it required uh, every app that I installed was on my home screen I think I'd probably use it, some of my apps a little bit more and um, organizing them is I mean as you can see pretty easy all the apps move out of the way and stuff so uh, I don't think it should be too big an issue I don't know what people are gonna do when they install like over 130 apps like I have on my phone um, plus the system apps and everything that comes with the phone I think you would have like I don't know I wonder if, I don't know if there's a limit to how many home screens you can have but uh, there's gonna be a whole lot of swiping so whenever you try to delete an app, if it's a system app, it won't let you do it. But um, whenever you delete an app, it, you're essentially what you're doing is you're deleting it from your phone completely. So I think that'll help a lot of people too, like some of the more basic users, um, and just knowing what's on their phone. They don't have to use like an app manager to like manage their apps and delete stuff. Uh, this just makes it a whole lot easier. If you try to delete a system app, you can see there up there in red Chinese lettering, uh, they get pretty mad at you and they tell you you can't do that. And of course, if it's a big enough deal for you, uh, you could always just install a third-party home or launcher like ADW or Launcher Pro. Uh, the slider here, if you grab it, you can drag it and you can just move really quickly to whatever home screen you like. Also, pressing the home button while on your default home screen will take you to this zoomed out view, kind of sense, sense-ish. Uh, the one thing I do like about it is that you can drag your home screen around to whichever one you like. Say if you want your home screen all the way on that side, um, boom, that's going to be your new one. So wherever you're at, press the home button, it takes you all the way to the far left. Um, I kind of am used to Android and stuff, so I'm just going to keep it right in the middle. You could also designate any one of these other ones to be your default home screen, which is neat too. So uh, the Mui guys did great, awesome, awesome work with just making things a little more easier to use and um, simplifying things and making it really intuitive and just awesome. I think it's really, really great. Now, adding a widget is kind of the same. You just hold down the button here and it brings up a grid-like view and you can see where, you know, everything's going to be where your icons will be at. Um, I like this a lot because um, sometimes when you have a widget, you're not really sure, like, the size of it and where it's going to fit exactly. And you, now, you, now you know, basically. I think it's cool and it um, helps things. You could uh, change your wallpaper by pressing that one there. Uh, there's your trash can, of course, and this one will choose the different types of widgets, and you have your home screens here at the bottom. You can cycle through them, and then from here you can grab whatever um, whatever widget you'd like to place. Drag and drop it. Boom. Shows up right there on that home screen. I'm not going to do picture frame because um, it's going to try to read my SD card, and SD card isn't mounted. Power control widget. Drag and drop it. Mark it, pop, pop, lock it, drop it. Pretty awesome, right? I think I, I, <coughs> um, pretty cool. Uh, they have this weird, it looks like it's in a box, and then, I don't know, I think it's kind of neat. It's it's all very kind of Chinese-ish to me. Um, the theme is kind of strange, might be a little strange for, I guess, us Westerners, but um, yeah, it looks like it's in, like, in a wooden box and stuff, but that is kind of the theme throughout with this Mui stuff. Uh, okay, let's get out of here. You can see here with their folders, it has like a wood type theme and it has like um, almost like a cork bath background, looks like cork material, but anyways, uh, you can uh, of course rename the folder to whatever you like, kind of like standard Android, and the folder, just the UI around it just looks a lot better than stock Android, I can tell you that right now. Um, see um, when you place stuff into the folder I mean it shows in the folder like that which I think is a lot better than the stock Android folder um, I think this is kind of neat I like that a lot pretty cool uh, the theme again throughout is kind of like this wood ish type theme um, I'm gonna explore the launcher some more so this is kind of like the main thing they have uh, live wallpapers which work just fine and perfect and dandy um, they even have the water one from the scent stuff 
Ooh, one thing I almost forgot in all the madness is uh, your wallpapers. A bunch of this stuff is in Chinese. This goes to your gallery. Uh, you have your live wallpapers, your wallpapers. But down here at the bottom, you have your lock screen wallpapers, which are these long uh, lock screen ones. You have the present one, which I think is kind of cute and quirky and, again, very Chinese. Um, I don't know why, but I just feel like a lot of this stuff is Chinese because this would never fly here in America. Why? Why would you have a picture of tomatoes? Really? Really? Um... But, I don't know, Chinese people are funny like that. They have pictures of, like, fruit. Um, some stuff, of course, is still in um, Chinese. So if I were to go to my settings, uh, brightness, it's in Chinese. So I guess if you are if you know Chinese, then you're pretty much set with this. Um, oh, yeah, scrolling through menus and stuff, they added this little bounce effect, which I think is so cool. I don't know, it's, it's the little things, the little things, people. So let's get into some of the apps. Uh, the music is just your regular um, standard Froyo one. It's got the tabs that are at the top. Uh, camera, standard stock Android camera. Uh, gallery is the 3D gallery. Uh, one of the things that is different though, and it kind of fits this whole theme, is they have their own type of um, dialer, phone book, and messaging. Uh, messaging on this one is actually stock Android because the other one was all in Chinese, but it uh, looks exactly like the dialer and the phone book. So let me show you the phone book real quick and you can just take a look at that. Uh, it has these little um, letters here at the side and by clicking through them it would actually um, take you straight to that contact with that with, with those letters. It starts out with that letter. Um, I like the whole look of it. I think it looks really really nice. Kind of a little too iPhone-ish again to some people. Um, they kind of kang this little thing down here on the side from the iPhone. Uh, but I'm all for that. If it just helps make things easier and simpler I'm all for it. Phone is the dialer here. It's got a nice little transparency. If I were to call someone, like, um, I don't know, that. Uh, you can kind of see that it uh, will have the contacts, of course, the contacts picture. Uh, you'll have your background here from your home screen, and everything's kind of transparent and stuff. So um, I like that a whole lot. I think that's really cool. And... Uh, if you jump back to your home screen, you can see here that you're on a current call and it has like a little thing there at the top telling you you're still on a call, which I think is neat too. So, yeah, I just love their icons and stuff. And I know people complain and say, oh, they look too iPhone ish to me or they're too cartoonish to me. But to me, it looks a lot different than um, just standard Android. And this is the best UI I think I've seen. If TouchWiz or Samsung originally made their TouchWiz like this, even as quirky and weird and strange as this is, um, I think it would work a lot better than the, the TouchWiz they actually have now, the one that they use, which I think is just completely horrendous. It's a bad ripoff of the iPhone, and I think this uh, manages to kind of copy some of the iPhone ideas a lot better and uh, make it just look better and run better, and it's still Android, and it's still awesome, and I think they just did a great, great job, the Mui guys. Um, Cyanogen is said to be working with them. I guess he got in touch with them after seeing this. And uh, he said he's going to be working with them. Uh, the Mui guys have actually found out how to do some things that uh, even Sanjin couldn't do. Because um, those Chinese guys are just awesome, awesome coders and they just know what they're doing. So I guess that's it for my little intro to the Mui ROM. Uh, the coolest thing from China since uh, the Great Wall. <laughs> so that's it. I'm Chris Chavez. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Crazy for you. Kimmy, that's the kid.